G'day folks, Jason here from the Outer Farm. As you can see, I've lost control of my joystick again. I've done a video a while back now, a few months ago, and I corrected the issue. So it looks like I've got the same issue again today. I'm not sure, but we'll dig in and we'll have a look further and see if it is. And if it isn't, what is it? Last time this happened to me, it was in here below the control. There's three nylon balls and one of them actually degraded and broke. There is a brass bush you can make, or sorry, not make, but you can actually purchase. I've had a few people online ask me for that part number. I've since found out a lot of the people have gone to their own Kubota dealers and know nothing about this component or this bit that I purchased from my local dealer. So what I'm thinking is the Kubota dealer locally has machined that up themselves because they've had customers come back obviously and had the same issue if you're looking for the dealer that actually machines these up and you've got this issue once you pull this boot off yourself email me you should be able to jump on the facebook page and find the email address or email me or just message me on youtube and i'll give you their details and contact them and i'm sure they can ship out the components you need the simple fix last time was we'll see if it's the same issue is we'll take the boot off you look down here, if you have a screwdriver, you can actually just press that button in here. It's a slip on, and at the back, there's two of them. The first time round, you find it's pretty hard, but once you've done it a couple of times, it sort of gets easier. So all that you do is push that boot up out of the road. Last time I pulled the whole lot off the joystick and everything, you don't have to do that repair. You just do it this way. So I'll bring you in closer, and I'll show you what happened last time. But before I do that, I'll just, I'll just show you where you put a screwdriver in there, you poke there's a pin there you just ply your box off this side and the same as around the back on the other side just ply that box out and that just slips straight up so looking at this that's the nylon existing ball from original and so is that one there so i'm not gonna it's, it can't be the back i'll go around the back and i'll show you the, the aftermarket one that i bought so that's the aftermarket one right there. Obviously it's made out of brass and that just slips straight on. If that's the issue on yours, check all those three balls. And if that's the case, it's just a matter of taking the balls that affected, that are broken out and slip on that brass bush. Clearly that's not the issue this time. So we'll have to do a bit of investigation into it and we'll see if we can't find what the issue is. I'll put this back together first. Simple case, you're pushing it down, and hear that, it snaps back in position. I thought it may have been a hydraulic issue, so I went around and checked every single connection point on the bucket. There's no leaks. Then I thought it might have been the two hoses that join the bucket that actually either open and close the bucket or tilt it up and down. I thought one of them may have popped off. There's no leaks there, and the couplings are all in place. So on the bucket here, there was nothing, nothing untowards or nothing that really stood out what the issue was. My next point of call was to check any joins that were obvious here or check any leaks under this Velcro glove here to find out if there's any, potentially it could have been a hose that blew. It can't be, it could have been a hose that pinched but I wouldn't imagine so because there's no actually tight spots or I haven't connected or hit any trees. All these joints, there was no issues. There's no leaks, no nothing. I come round to the box here, the coupling box or the head box, and I could not find anything. There's no leaks, all the wires are in place. Thought it might have been it, but that's been like that from day one, just an inch short of plastic cover. So I checked all those wires. They were all right. Check around there. There's nothing blatantly obvious in the, around this control box or from that coupling box. There's only one more point of call, so I followed those all the way back, those hoses, checked under here. All those connectors, there was no leaks, no nothing. The wires went back up into the joystick, so I followed the joystick, had a look all the way up in there, disconnected all that, have a look in the joystick, that was all connected, nothing was loose. So it had me stumped what was wrong at this point. By this point, all those inspection points took me two hours so I'm already down two hours of work which I could have done on this tractor 
and I was up the top of the hill near the river and the bucket was down probably only a foot off the ground and I had to take it down to park it in the shed through the creek crossing. There's no way I could have done that with that bucket in that position. It would have dug on the other side of the creek coming out the other side. So I was lost. I thought I would have had to get a service technician out here to have a look and I don't did not know how long it would be because they're a few hours away to my nearest dealer. So it could be potentially up to a week without this going. So at this point, I was pretty disheartened. I just had to sit here, I had no choice but to sit here and play with my joystick. And it wasn't until I was sitting here playing with the joystick that I realized I noticed something down at that coupling box. If you ever look where my finger is now, I don't know if you can see it on camera, I move my finger back and I'll play with the joystick, but have a look in that area where I was pointing to. I'll bring you down and give you a closer look. If you pay particular attention to that hose or that cable right there, as I move the joystick up and down, it moves. When I move my joystick sideways, which you'll notice when the video was going, that controls the tilt up and forwards of my bucket. When I move my joystick up and down, which is the lowering, lifting and lowering of the bucket, it's on that cable there. And as you can see, it's moving up and down. After finding that out, this could be potentially an easy fix. So I wouldn't imagine that shaft was supposed to go up and down. Because when I was tilting the bucket, none of this area was moving. It was only when I was trying to lift and lower the whole bucket that I noticed this shaft was moving. They wouldn't have an Allen key here or a grub screw if it was supposed to move freely. So just have a look at the size and grab yourself an Allen key and we'll put it on and we'll see if that is the fix. Bring in for a closer look. So there's that grub screw there. It's an Allen key. You slip the Allen key on. And all I did was just tighten that up. For all you guys out there are sitting on the edge of your seat with anticipation, let's see if that was a fix. We'll just kick her over, find out if it's fixed. Woo! Wow, happy man. Who would have thought a simple grub screw has come loose that had cost me two hours of potentially heartbreak, knowing a service technician could be potentially out for a week. Just a simple fix. Well guys, that's probably about it. If you jump back at my other video where I actually correct and fix that nylon bush in there, it was probably, I don't know, six or eight months ago now, but you'll have a look, it's pretty easy to find. I think it's called front end loader. Have a look at that repair, I'll show you how to fix that. And if that wasn't the issue, the second point of call should be that grub screw. The good thing about this grub screw, if you've got a set of Allen keys, that is a zero dollar repair. Those brass bushes in there are $33 each. Australian that is. If all three go, that's a hundred dollar repair. So I'm stoked it worked out the way it did. Anyway guys, hope you have a good morning, a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening wherever you watch this from and we'll catch you later.